welcome back. So finally, we are at the home stretch of completing SQL 50. So in the last video, we covered advanced string functions, regular expressions, and the clause. And this should have been the last set of questions to do. But as I said in that video, we'll actually do that before completing subqueries, which we'll begin with today. So first of all, let me just come here and put a timer on. Okay, so subqueries. The first question, employees whose manager left the company. Uh, Boo-hoo, I really don't care. But anyway, we have to answer the question. So first of all, let's get rid of the solution. And let's begin. So we have our table called employees with four attributes, employee ID, manager ID, and salary, all being integers, and name being a variable char. As stated before, a variable char is just a character of variable length. All right. So we're also told that employee ID is a primary key for this table, and it contains information about the employees, their salary, and the ID of the managers. We are also told some employees do not have a manager and the manager ID is null. They make that seem very sad. Well, we have to write a query to find the IDs of the employees whose salary is strictly less than 30,000 US dollars and whose manager left the company. And when a manager leaves the company, the information is deleted from the employees table, but the reports still have a manager ID set to that manager that left. And we have it here. Let's look. Employee ID 11 is the only output. Let's look at 11. Okay, 11. Salary is 28,000. So that's definitely less than 30,000. And the manager ID is 6. And if we notice, 6 is nowhere in our employee IDs, but it does exist in a manager. So which means at some point, 6 did exist as an employee. And that is how we'll find our answer. So let's do this. Let's select employee ID from employees. Okay, let's do that. This should return all of these values. And actually, I, I think I can wrap a distinct. Uh, Right, okay. So now we get all the employees from the employees table. If a manager does exist, irrelevant of whether they are a manager or not, they obviously have an employee ID. So let's consider this as our subquery. And this is how we write our actual solution query. We will say select employee ID from employees. Okay, and this part is easy because we have to say where salary is less than one, two, three, four, five, right? 30,000. And manager ID not in, I'll create parentheses and I'll just cut that. Okay, and then finally, we'll order by employee ID because that's what it says right here. Order by employee ID. Now let's run this query. And great, our successful case test run. So let's submit. And we get a wrong answer. All right, select employee ID from employees where salary is less than 30,000 and manager ID not in. So the output should be 8, 11, 12, 14. Oh, okay, so this actually shouldn't be here. Okay. No, okay. Select employee ID from employees with salary. Oh. Uh, that's why <laughs> I got my value wrong 30,000 or 300,000 and there we go all right a little silly mistake on my part but anyway there's our answer and now we can move on to the next question let's 
let's get rid of that okay the question is called exchange sheets <laughs> exchange seats we have a table called seat with two attributes id and student one being an integer and one being a variable char we are told that id is the primary key for this table and each row indicates the name and id of a student id is continuous increment okay we have to write a solution to swap the id of every two consecutive students if the number of students is odd then the id of the last student is not swapped and then we return the result table ordered by id in ascending order and then we have the result format is in the following example okay let's think about what we are trying to do so we need to select an id and a student from the seat table right we also need to order by id so order by id in ascending which is a default so we can omit asc okay but we can't just select the id and student we need to do something else we will open up a case and we'll end as id okay and then we will select the student but for the actual parameters for our case we will do this when id is equal to and i'll select the max because it's continuous increment when we select the max id that happens to give us also the number of seats so this will actually give us a number of seats from seat and and this is important when id i forget what's operator called modulus operator 2 is equal to 1 in that case it's odd right then we'll just say then we'll return id when this is another case we'll check for so think of this being an if this being an if else or an elif depends what language you come from when id modulus 2 is just equal to 1 then id plus 1 because that's how essentially will it be uh, increment value else id minus one and these two cases will essentially perform a swap now when we run this we get an accepted test case and now let's submit it <coughs> And there we go, <laughs> apparently an abysmal runtime, but it does accept the answer. Let's move on to the next question. Let me get rid of this, right. Okay, so the question is movie rating. We have two tables, we have three tables. <laughs> so our first table is movies with two attributes, movie ID and title. We are told that movie ID is the primary key for the table movies and title is the name of the movie. We have a table called users and the only thing we are told is user ID is the primary key for this table. Where name is probably the name of the user. And then we finally have the movie ratings table. We are told that movie ID and user ID is the primary key for this table and it contains the rating of a movie by a user in their review created at is the user's review date. And we have essentially two queries that we need to do. We need to find the name of the user who rated the greatest number of movies in case of a tie return the lexiographically smaller username and find the movie name with the highest average rating in February 2020. In case of a tie, return the lexiographically smaller movie name. And then we have an example uh, down here. So let's do the simpler one. 
we need to select the name of the movie, right? That has the highest average rating in the month February for the year 2020. And if there is a tie, we return the lexiographically smaller movie name. So we need to grab data from two tables because we need the movie rating, which gives us movie ID, user ID, and rating, which is what we need. And we need the movies table because that's the only way for us to grab the title of a movie. So we'll have to do a join. So we know that we need the title. So let's say select title. And what do I need to select it as? It needs to be called uh, results. Okay. Select ta uh, title as results from movie rating. This, however, will grab every movie. But I can filter this down by doing the following. If I do join movies, on movie rating what's happening here movie rating dot movie id is equal to movies dot movie id this will only return title assuming the movie id matches or appears in both the tables but again, that's not really what, what we want. We can further filter this down by doing the following. We can say where, so only consider the results if the movie IDs match in both tables, assuming the following condition holds true. So where, extract, and as I told you, extract and be used to gain or remove, not remove, uh, how can I say, uh, extract means to take, no, but that doesn't make sense. Extract. Extract. He extracted blood. I assume, yeah, I think it, let's use yes, take. So take a portion off. Oh, yeah, sure. Take a portion off. So essentially, extract takes a portion off. And what do we want to extract? Well, we want to take the portion of the year and the month from... And ways created at created at is the movie rating. So movie rating dot created at. So that will extract the year and the month, but we only want it in the year 2020 for the second month. So 2020-02. And if we do a group by title, this will do it for every title. And we'll order by average rating, because that's what we told to do, descending. And in case of a tie, we'll break the tie by passing in title, which should be movies.title. Okay. And let me run this. And then we get three movies. We get Frozen 2, Joker, and Avengers. And Frozen 2 is what we want. Okay, we see Frozen 2 here. So how do we reduce this to only consist of the first value? Simple. All we do is pass a limit 1. Now when we run it, we get Frozen 2 as results. So the first part completed. We now need to get the well, second part is completed, I should say. We now need to get the first part, which is Daniel. Okay. I need to, let me just refresh what I'm doing here. Uh, find the name of the user who has rated the greatest number of movies. Okay, so the person who rated the greatest number of movies. So I'll need two tables again. Uh, I'll need the users, so I can get the user ID but that user has to exist in the moving ratings ID to confirm that the user has done rating. Uh, okay. So in that case, what I can do is select again, name as results from users. But the thing is, I'm only gonna do it with user ID 
And now I'll write a subquery. We use ID in, let's see, what can I do? Okay, so where use ID exists in the following table to select. And this will ensure that I'll only consider users who exist in the movie ratings table, which basically means, yes, the user has made a rating at some point. Group by use ID. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to do the following. I only want to select the users who have a count of rating. And I'm afraid that's another subquery, which is equal to select. And then I can do this. I can select max rating count because number of ratings is ratings count, okay? As displayed, uh, where are you? Here, that one, okay. Rating count, wait, rating as rating count. From movie rating. And then I'll group by user ID so I don't get one value. Instead I get values for each user ID. And I can end it there, but then I'll also have to do a, let's see. You'll have to be returned as a subtable, so I'll call you subquery. And that should be okay. And I will have to do an order by name. And for now, I'll just comment that. No, do I want to comment it out? Now I need to wait. Okay, let's just see. So I only want the name uh, from users where the user ID exists in the movie ratings column, grouped by user ID, but only when they have a count, which is equivalent to the max number of ratings from uh, the movie ratings table, and I'll group by user ID. I have an error. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. So having count of rating equal to select max rating count, right? But then I'll have to do another subquery because I have to say from, and then I'll do select count of rating as rating count from movie rating, I'll group by user ID. And then after that, I can do as subquery. Now let's see. I have an error here. Let's see. What are by name? Uh, no, that makes sense. So select name as results from users with user ID in. Select user ID from movie rating group by user ID having a count of rating equal to select max rating count from select count as rating count from movie rating group by user ID as subquery. Hmm. 
so loud. Move that hug my ears, okay. <coughs> A subquery. And then that one comes here, okay. And then I'll have to. I have an error in my order by name. I have an error in my SQL syntax. Check the manual corresponds to your SQL Server version for the right syntax to use in the event. Okay. That closes that. There's nothing being run there. Select max rating count. Having count rating equal to, I'll open parentheses because I'm using a subquery where I select the max rating count from, and then I'll do select count of rating as a rating count from movie rating group by user ID as subquery. And that's closed, okay. And then I'll have count. What I need is a sip coffee and see what's wrong here. <coughs> Select title as results. Wait, is this the problem? No, because that's not the problem, okay. So the problem is something here. Select name as results from users where user ID in, and then I have a subquery which states select user ID from movie rating group by user ID having a count of rating equal to, and then I have a subquery which I closed which states select max of the rating count from the following sub subquery which states select count of rating as rating count from movie rating group by user ID. And because I need a table name, I'm calling that subquery. Right, okay. Uh, what is wrong here? What is wrong? Let me think. Hmm. Is it the naming of the table? No, that doesn't make sense. I have an error in my SQL syntax group by user's name. That's interesting. So, select name as a result from users, we use ID in. Select user ID from movie rating, group by user ID, having a count of rating equal to select max rating count. Wait, select max rating count from select count of rating as rating count from movie rating group by user id as sub query order by name hmm. let me get rid of this and maybe i'm doing something wrong right 
the sound is so loud. Select name as results. Oh, I think I know what the problem was. Was uh, it, it could have been that I was using a uh, an alias as a valid query or an attribute when I shouldn't have been. That could have been the problem, because sometimes when you wrap it in parentheses or when you refer to it later, that at times it doesn't work. So that could be the issue. And uh, let's just try running this. And there we go, okay. So it's obviously wrong, and I get uh, Daniel and Monica. But if I do this, if I do an order by name, I then get Daniel and Monica, okay, that's right. And then finally, I limit by one. And then I get Daniel. Okay, cool. And then to simply, now I have two tables returning two individually successful queries. The only thing I need to do is pass in a union all to merge all my results. Union all, so that should be parentheses. Okay. And parentheses. And accepted after a little debugging. Test case passed, but took too long. That's interesting. Those are two very weird runs, but as I explained in the first video, there are many things that affect your runtime, so don't beat yourself up on that. Just submit again and see what happens. Okay, now I am feeling cold. Who sent me an email? Not important. Anyway, we will now do the next question. Let's see how many can we do. Let's just do one more and I'll come back. Okay. Uh, the question is restaurant growth. In SQL, we have those two attributes being custom. Or the next question be in restaurant growth. As you can see, we have four attributes in the customer table. Customer ID being an integer, name being a variable char, visited on being a date, and amount being an integer. And we have a little more information here. Anyway, so we are the restaurant owner in this fictional universe and want to analyze a possible expansion. 
we are told that there will be at least one customer every day, and we have to compute the moving average of how much the customer paid in a 7 day window, which be in the current day plus 6 days before. An average amount should be rounded to two decimal places. And we must return the table ordered, ordered by visiting on in ascending order. Okay, so default. So let's begin. Let's say select visited on. Right, so it's visited on. Visited amount, uh, visited on amount and average amount. Okay, so amount that's in the table. And now we need the average amount. We will not do the average function instead use the round function right and then we'll do amount divided by seven because that's number of days which is why we're not using the average function and we'll call it average amount okay and then we'll create a table to draw from in this case from select distinct visited on visited on sum of amount and then we'll use this thing called over and you doing this we can essentially do a range so over and we'll do order by visited on range between and we'll create an interval so interval of six days of so six day preceding and this is important preceding the minimum visited on so preceding the first time visited over Proceeding minimum visited on mm. I think I spelled that wrong. P R E C E D A N G. Yeah. Proceeding and current row. And we'll call that amount. Right. And then we'll come back. And then we will simply do minimum visited on as I said earlier. So minimum visited on over so all of them as first date from customer and let's call this table uh, T and then finally where visited visited on is greater or equal to first date plus six. And let's try running that. And successful, okay. Now let's do some mission. All right, great. We'll move on to the next question. And that is friend request two. Who has the most friends? Clearly not you. <laughs> All right. For this one, uh, we have a table called request accepted, with three three attributes: an integer for requester ID, an integer for acceptor ID, and a date for acceptor ID. And we're told the table contains the ID of the user who sent the request, the ID of the user who received the request, and the date when the request was accepted, if accepted. We've write a solution to find the people who have the most friends and the most friends numbers. And then we are told the tests are generated so that only one person has the most friends. In this case, we will create a table at runtime using a CTE, which I forget what it stands for, but essentially we can create a table and we can reference a table during our query. So with CTE as, and then we create our table, okay? We'll do a select request I can't spell that. what's happening here request ID as ID from request accepted and we'll do a union all because that's not the only thing I want I also want select acceptor 
septa ID as ID. So now I essentially have a table with two attributes, an acceptor ID and a requester ID. Okay. And then I'll do a select ID. This is my actual query. Count of ID from the table above, okay? As num from, not from any table we have, but the table I just created. So from CTE, I'll group by ID and I'll order by num descending if I run this it's wrong as you can see I get three three one two 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 and four one and it's wrong because I am missing on one step purposely and that is limit one so get the topmost. And there we go. And let's do a submission. And there we go. <laughs> Apparently an abysmal runtime. That's weird. But anyway, let's go to the next question. And I need to do something. So I'll be back. Count to uh, 60. <laughs> All right, I hope you completed counting to 60. And now I will get rid of this old uh, query and we'll just go over, th over everything, okay. This I believe is the second last question. Uh, yeah, okay. So we have one table called insurance with four attributes being floats and one attribute being an integer. We are told that PID is a primary key. Each row of this table contains information about one policy where PID is the policyholder's policy ID. TIV 2015 is total investment in 2015 and TIV 2016 is total investment value in 2016. Latitude is the latitude of the policyholder city. It is not null. And LON is the longitude of the policyholder city. It is also not null. We have to write a solution to report the sum for all total investment values in 2016 for all policyholders who meet the following conditions. They have the same TIV 2015 value as one or more policyholders and are not located in the same city as other policyholders. In other words, we have an attribute pair, latitude and longitude must be unique. Okay. So, if we... Let's think about the sub-queries we need to write. Let me stretch. The first thing we can do is think about... If we select the latitude and longitude from the insurance table, we can group by latitude and longitude, okay? What that will do is create attribute pairs, and we can check where the count is equal to 1. We can then repeat that same idea to select the total investment value from 2015 and we'll also group by the investment value. And, do, <clears throat> and by doing this, we, have, we would have created two tables from which we can draw data from. So let's do the following. Select a round function. It's going to be the sum of TIV 2016, the total investment value 2016, Rounded to as, is it just TIV 2016? Oh, so I don't need to, no, I will have to. As TIV 2016, because otherwise I'll just end up being round sum TIV 2016. From insurance. Okay. 
Okay. Where TIV 2015, however, is in the following table. And for that we'll do, we'll select TIV 2015 from insurance. This will grab again all the values, so we need to filter it even more. From insurance, and we'll group by TIV 2015. And we will count the total number of rows, so count, so having count of all the rows greater than 1. But we won't stop there, we'll also do an AND, latitude and longitude pair, in, and we'll do another subquery, select latitude, longitude, not lat link, that's not right, from insurance. Group by last long and again having counts of number of rows greater than eight, equal to one. And if I put it there and if I try running the query, <coughs> all right, cool. I will do a submission. <coughs> Done. And now on to the last question. Let's get rid of it. This is the only hard question in SQL 50. Although some have been annoying, this one and uh, have been complex. This one clearly states hard. We have a table called employee, a table called apartment. We are told that ID is a primary key for this table, department ID is a foreign key to the department table, and each row of the table of the employee table indicates the ID, name, and salary of employee. And then we have another table called department. ID is a primary key for this table, and each row of this table indicates the ID of a department and its name. We are told that a company's executive is interested in seeing who earns the most money in each of the company departments. A high earner in a department is an employee who has a salary in the top three unique salaries for that department. We have to write a solution to find the employees who are high earners in each of their departments, and we can return the result table in any order. And then we have our example down here. Okay. Now, the way that I did this the first time was I used a CTE. Now, I forgot how I did it. <laughs> All right, so let me grab my phone. Oh, it is in my GitHub. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Let's check something. You can't tell, but for some weird reason, my uh, Wi-Fi is being incredibly slow. Let's see. Uh, what will I have to do? So if I take the department name, the employee name, and let's create a smaller table with only information we need. Okay, so with, you'll typically do with CTE, but I'll call mine something else. I'll call mine ranked salary. 
as, and then I'll create the conditions. I'll do select d.name, okay, as department, e.name, as employee, E dot salary, and then I'll do something weird. <clears throat> There's this function called dense rank. It's used to assign a rank to each value in its query. And if you think of rank where one being highest rank, two being second highest, third being third highest, so ranking represents the order of importance in some way. We can do that by doing the following. We can say dense rank, open close parentheses, over a given partition. Over part, over partition by, and we'll choose our partition, so it's e.department ID, because we are trying to find the salaries for departments, right? So department ID, and we'll order by E dot salary as descending, right? Or in any order, okay, descending is fine then because we get the salaries in order. And we'll call it salary rank. Now, we can't just do that. We have to state where we're getting data from. So employee as E. And we are joining department as D on E dot department ID, which is a foreign key to the department dot ID table. And that is our table that we'll be working with. We can now say select star from ranked, ranked salary. And this is obviously wrong, but let's just see what happens. Uh, we get this, we get for each department, so IT, 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 and then sales. And if you notice, it is order of the highest salaries and the salary rank for that department. So department, department, employee, salary as salary from ranked salary where anyone top three okay so where salary rank is less than or equal to three we could just say uh less than four and we'll do an order by department and then we will order by salary, descending. And if we have a, still a tie, we'll break the tie using employee. And let's run that. And we get a successful test case submission. Now let's do an actual submission. And done, dude, why are you annoying me? And that's it. SQL 50 complete. Congratulations.